power of a story. Mm. There is something about it, as you know better than anyone else, that just grips people. How have stories been useful to you and what's your, what's your take on them? Because whenever somebody like you or somebody else starts a speech with a captivating story, I can almost sense in the room there's a different, a different movie going on. People are drawn in, they lean forward. How, have, how important are stories in public speaking? Oh, yeah. much more important than I, than I used to think they, they were. And they're probably actually more important than we think they are today in the society. Because that is the way we have communicated as humans for millennia. That is the way that we made sure that grandchildren knew that the bear is over there and the, the lion is over here, the creek is over there in the stories that we would tell. So we're hardwired from in the deepest parts of our brain to listen. If, if, if you think about it, you're trying to study and something comes on the television, a story, it is so hard to turn and or, or not or to turn away from that. Mm -hmm. So early on, I did not think stories played a part at all. I thought I had compelling data, compelling points that needed to just be told. And so I would spend my time saying as much as I could in declarative statements and I would mm. say these things very enthusiastically and think that's what would grab people's attention and people would not remember what I had had said and I then I saw myself someone else speaking the way that I spoke and I got bored I got mm. I got bored and they were saying super interesting things that could make me a lot of money and I had such a hard time zeroing on on it followed by a speaker that got up and started with a story and the story I didn't even know where it was going, but I was locked in there. He wrapped the story and made a point. Days later, I could not remember the main points the first speaker had given, and I still remembered the story and the point from the second one. So they are, they are vitally important because they're sticky to the brain. And so, so many people underestimate they undersell, they underestimate the, what, how big stories are, and so it's also a differentiator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk about how important stories are, but go to any tech conference. I, I, my focus niche is banks and finance, but I get hired by a lot of tech companies to come in and you know, we talk about, uh, talk about communication. A lot of great information. Very little of it sticky. Mm. <laughs> so it is, a, it is a differentiator, again, that can get someone noticed that way. Yeah, well, one of the even more interesting things, rather than just a story, is there seems to be a pattern of a good story. So, obviously the classic hero's journey pattern is one that's been repeated for God knows how long, but there's an interesting idea called the Lindy effect. Basically, the longer that something has been around, the longer it will tend to stay around. And so time acts as a filtration mechanism of what ideas are most fundamental. And in terms of stories, it's interesting to see the same patterns in, say, the oldest stories, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, some of the earlier um, Greek myths. Something like Harry Potter, which is relatively new in humanity, I don't think it's a coincidence that it was a massive bestseller that has changed culture, is it follows that same pattern of the hero's journey, but also I think what you said of, of using almost a story as a Trojan horse to get in an idea to have it stick way more. And I think that's why parables have been so big is you don't just say declaratively something or you ought to do this. You explain it in a story. You show why from a, from a psychological perspective. So it's, it's interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, that was so true.